guys, here we are again. Well, I say we, but it's really just me. Well, it is we. It's me and Finley. We are, I don't know if you can see Finley. Is he Finley right there? You right there, buddy? Hey, there's Finley. It is a weekend for just Finley and I. It's guys weekend. Jan is off with her girlfriend shopping this weekend. As you can see, I've got the generator. I've got Uno. And we are off for a boondocking weekend at Juniper Springs in Ocala, Florida in the Ocala National Forest. So we are heading out. I'm gonna close the door here for Finley so I don't pinch his nose. And we are headed out. We got an early start. You can see it's a little overcast today and it's a little chilly. I got my big jacket on, but we have got an early start. So we are headed to the park early and we're not gonna have to check in in the dark. Excuse me, I'm trying to get in the car here. I'm getting in. Is Finley here? Finley, you out there? Hey, there he is. He's looking out the window. So we are going to crank up the truck get going and we will see you guys when we get to Juniper Springs because it's still going to be light. We'll get hooked up there and we are meeting a friend of ours, uh, Doug. I think you've seen him in another video before. Uh, Doug and his wife Leslie, we had a really good time a couple of times. So it's just Doug, I and Finley this weekend braving the cold weather. We'll see how it goes. Until then, bye. Well, as you can see, we made it. There's Finley. Say hi, Finley. Finley. Say hi, there he is, the wonder dog. So we made it. The wind is blowing like crazy though. I hope it doesn't mess up the speaker or the microphone rather. Uh, so we made it, it's cold. The trailer is disconnected and Finley's chasing leaves. The wind's blowing, leaves are blowing, Finley's chasing leaves. We didn't make it, Uno's here in one piece. I'm gonna get set up, get the generator going cause it's a little chilly. Doug is somewhere over there. We caravan down together so we made it safe and sound. It's still daylight out. That is a huge plus with it being daylight. Get set up. I'm going to hook the generator up so I can get the heater going and warm it up in the trailer a little bit. I think we are going to grill tonight. There's a big bear garbage thing over there. So I know this is in the Ocala National Forest and I know they have bears in here, but I hope we don't have any bears tonight. That would not be fun. Well, as long as we're in the trailer, I don't think they'll get into the trailer, but Finley would probably want to smell and sniff and do whatever to find the bears. I don't want him to be around a bear. A bear is probably 10 times the size he is. So we are going to finish getting hooked up. Finley's going to check things out and we will catch up with you later. We'll probably hunt down Doug. We're going to cook on the grill. Probably uh, shoot some video while we're cooking on the grill in the twilight hours. So until then, we'll see you around. Bye. We found Doug. Say hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. Doug's trying to get his generator started. He winterized him and now he's got to get him primed again, so uh, I drug him out to go boondock and he hates me now. Do you hate me, Doug? I hate you, Doug. Yep, see, he I drug him out boondock and he wasn't prepared to go boondocking and now he's got to prime his generators. He'd got them all cleaned up for the winter and wasn't going to use them and his best friend called him and said, let's go boondocking and of course, I ruined his and entire of winter. Yes. Of course, he's not an idiot, so. <laughs> well, of course, oh yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> of course, how many times did I tell you when we went riding that it wouldn't be windy or it wouldn't rain? What is it? Yep, it's it ain't not sprinkling yet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Poor Doug, I took him on way too many adventures in the rain and the wind, and and it was just, it was more fun than we should have humanly had, right? Uh, let me get back to you. Yes, he's gonna get back to me on that. So he's got a, I think his site's a little bit nicer than mine. He's kind of Nanner, secluded. Nanner. Yeah, he's kind of secluded in a little alcove here. Oh, look at that, Honda generator, cranked it right up. Look at that. You can't, you can't beat that. So we are. Finley's here. I don't know what he's doing. He's just kind of checking stuff out. So we are in our sights, leveled up. He's getting the final stuff going on his Honda generators. We will probably get grilling here probably in the next half hour or so. We're going to have a nice relaxing dinner and then tomorrow we will go check the springs out. So we will probably, I don't know if we'll do any more videoing tonight, but we will definitely catch up with you guys in the morning when we're out at the springs and probably we'll take the nature tour. I think they have a nature tour going on this weekend. So until then, we will see you later. Bye. Say bye, Doug. Bye, Doug. He's a character. Bye. Good morning, guys. It is a bit chilly out this morning. Finley and I are going for a walk. Um, sun is coming up. It's a beautiful morning, except it is, I know I'm jerking around here and I'm under this little hoodie, but it is a bit chilly out this morning. So we are going to take Finley for his little morning walk, endure the cold weather, but it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. You can't probably tell because the sky is so white. Maybe it'll get blue a little bit, 
but there is not a cloud in the sky. So I am prepared for a beautiful day. We are gonna go to the Springs. Juniper Springs has a gorge. Oh, I dropped his leash. Hold on a second. Uh, Juniper Springs has a beautiful spring here and a beautiful facility around the spring. So we're looking forward to going exploring that. They also generally have a nature walk in the morning. Um, I'm not sure what time. We'll go up to the visitor center. I think they have it a couple of times during the day. I'm just trying to figure out what Finley's doing. He's over there smelling. So let's go this way, buddy. Um, so we are going to do that this morning. When we get to the visitor center, I will check back in and let you guys know how it's going and probably not have this hood on because I cannot see out of my right eye. So that is a bit distracting and probably looks goofy. It looks like I'm probably ready to hold up a bank or something. So I will see you guys when we get to the visitor center. Until then, have a good morning. Hey buddy, come here. Hey guys, well, Doug, me, Finley went out exploring this morning. We found a neat boardwalk. I don't think we expected to run into the boardwalk and we found part of the canoe trail from Juniper Springs. Finley, of course, has already wanted to go in the water. You can see, look at, he would go down there in a heartbeat. Look at his tail wagon. He sees that water, he would jump in there in a heartbeat. We're gonna follow this boardwalk. You can see there's a boardwalk. Looks like it goes left and right, right, Doug? Yep, yep. So we're gonna give that a shot, follow it around, see where it goes. I think part of it heads up to the day use area where the spring, the head spring is, and the other part probably follows this little, is it a creek, stream, river, what would you call it? This is a creek. Creek, it's a creek. Not a creek, but a creek. So we'll follow this and see where it goes, see what kind of trouble Finley can get into. Lord knows, he will probably try to get in that water before the day's over. Look at, he sees that water, he would love to be in there. Then I would be in trouble with Jan. Because, of course, you know, he would smell like a dog. So, see you guys in a bit. Bye. Not sure what this is going to sound like, but we found the mill with the running water wheel and that thing is moving. I'm gonna tell you what, there's a lot of horsepower coming out of that little water wheel right there. You could you could grind just about anything you want, didn't you when you think Doug? I think you could. Yeah. Corn would work well. Yep. Probably a few hands, few few feet and a little bit of corn. My luck would be more feet than corn or more hands than corn. Finley doesn't know what to think about it. It's kinda he's not sure. I don't know where he's at. There he is. He was looking at it, wasn't quite sure when we were walking up all that kind of funky noise. So this is the wooden trail we're still on and it kind of takes you all through the park. So I think we're gonna continue exploring the wooden trail and see where it takes us. It probably takes us right up to the spring, which I think is feeding this water well. We'll find out in a bit. Hey guys, well, we found the spring. Oh, Doug almost killed himself. Have a nice trip, Doug. <laughs> At least I didn't fall in. Yeah, so we found the spring and it's gorgeous. Um, there is a tiered section that goes all the way around it. So it looks like you can sit up and have like a little picnic area, come down in the steps and go swimming. There's a little entranceway right there. I'm not going in the water because I'm bundled up in a jacket and it's pretty cold. Although I bet the spring is probably warmer than the air. What do you think, Doug? Uh, it looks like. Yeah, so it, it's a very nice area. Come on, Finley, let's go, come on. Finley's walking around. He's not quite sure what to make of it. He's uh, trying to decide whether he wants to go swimming or if he just wants to walk around the side. Of course, like I said before, he's not going swimming. He's up here. Hey, slow down. So we will continue to walk around the spring, enjoy it, see what's left around here. The day use area is closed though today. They have lost power to the park, so thank goodness we have a generator. Didn't you think that's why they closed the park today, because the power's gone? That'd be my guess. Yeah, they. Yep. Uh, we just met the ranger and she said the park's, the day use area is closed. They've closed at entrance. So we were lucky we got in camping so we can still enjoy the spring in the area. Hopefully the power will come back on sometime today. Although, I don't think it matters for us, does it? We were dry camping anyway. Anyway, so, so we're, uh, we don't have to have power. So we're gonna walk around, enjoy the spring a little bit more, hike some more, and we'll catch up with you in a little bit. Bye. So I'm shooting this on the phone because the camera's inside. But as you can see, Finley's ignoring me. I was driving him crazy trying to take a picture of us. 
and he was getting very aggravated with me. So he decided to turn his back to me and ignore me. I just thought this was hilarious that my own dog cannot stand me. My wife hates it when I start taking pictures and doing videos and stuff. I think I've done the same thing to Finley now. He he can't stand it anymore that I was trying to get him to pose for a picture. He just is utterly ignoring me now. It's the story of my life. I go camping, it's supposed to be a guy's weekend. And what do I end up with? I'm isolated again. So I still love him though. He's still a good boy, but he's ignoring me right now. That's, that's my life when I go camping with a dog. He's ignoring me. I'm probably the only person in the world that can have a dog ignore them. Man's best friend, except when I aggravate him. Hopefully he'll forgive me tonight when we start having chili for dinner tonight. I don't know. We'll see. But until then, I'm going to try to coax him back into paying attention to me. One minute, 37 seconds later. Hey guys, we're all here and we're going to make chili. Not really make homemade, homemade chili because I'm cheating. I've got a chili packet, but everything else is going to be chili. We're going to do it in the Dutch oven, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. It shouldn't be too complicated. I think it's really just heating everything up, so it's not like it's some kind of overly complicated cuisine we're trying to make. It's just basically heating stuff up, but I am going to film it going to try to show you how to do it. I don't know. We'll see. Doug's here, so I'm for sure that he will give me 100% cooperation in, in filming because he, look, look at him, he's over there raring to go. You know I about... I want to see the, the the yellow cake mix. Yeah, I, that's the, gone. Last that, I, I got to do that one. I'm that's going to be separate. We're not doing yellow cake tonight because nah. neither, neither of us really need dessert. We just need a basic meal. You already know about Finley shunning me earlier after I tried to get a picture with him and he turned his back to me. So I'm going to try again to see if he will cooperate. But we are going to film making, not really making, heating up chili. I think that's a, that's that's probably a more fair Properly assessment. Cooking. Yes, because it's everything's really, I already browned the meat. All that stuff is done. It's just a matter of putting the beans and everything in this Dutch oven and heating it up. But I will walk through the steps of heating something up in a Dutch oven because it's not really hard. I have my little charcoal starter. I have all of the stuff to get the Dutch oven going and the Dutch oven's in the truck, but I got a ways to go before I get to that point. When I get the Dutch oven out of the truck, that's when I'll start putting everything in it, but I gotta get the charcoal going. I gotta get the Dutch oven kinda warmed up and then I'll put stuff up in there to heat it up. We'll do those step by step as we go. First thing is getting the charcoal going. Oh, no, I'm not gonna stuff book. it with paper, I'm cheating. So the first step is just get a little bit of charcoal going. Not, you don't need a lot. Just get a little bit of charcoal going, not hard. Of course, Doug pointed out that I'm cheating. I'm not cheating. using. I'm not using paper. I'm using good old lighter fluid. Doesn't take a lot. Just put a little bit on top of it. Just a little bit. Don't need an inferno. And then, of course, I'm also cheating again. I'm not using real matches. I'm just using a little butane lighter. Thank goodness I've got actually a little bit in there. And then. You wait for this to get white coals on it. And you always leave some in the charcoal chimney. Because if you take it all out, you gotta start all over again. So you always leave probably, I don't know, eight or nine charcoal briquettes in the chimney. That way you can put more on top of it and keep making more charcoal as you go along. So we'll let this get going for a while and then we'll go to step two, which is taking the pan, I probably walked out of frame here, but taking the pan, putting some charcoal on the bottom of this, then putting the Dutch oven on top of it, and you're good to go. The good thing about this pan is it's really easy to clean up. Charcoal burns down to nothing but ash, and then all you have to do is deal with this thing. Where'd you get the pan? I got the pan from Tractor Supply. Plug for Tractor Supply, now they owe me $10,000. I'll wait to collect that. Ah, and you can use it as a drum if you want after you're, after you're done making your food. So we'll let this uh, turn to charcoal, and then we'll come back and get the Dutch oven warming up and then start putting the ingredients in. So, see you in a bit. Okay guys, we're back. And here is what you're looking for. See how that's kind of still got a little bit of black on it, but it's got white around it? That's what you're looking for in the, in the charcoal to have that little bit of ash on it. That way you got plenty of charcoal left for heating up the Dutch oven. So what I'm gonna do is I'll pick the Dutch oven up, set it off to the side, and I'm going to start with somewhere between seven to 10 coals on the bottom, and then I'll set the Dutch oven back on top of it. And again, reminder, 
make sure you leave some coals in the chimney. That way you can make more charcoal if you need it. I am probably going to heat this chili up for probably about two hours. So I will definitely need to make more charcoal probably about 45 minutes in. I will put some more charcoal in here to get it going again. Because uh, it takes about, if you've got charcoal already going, it takes about 10 minutes to get the charcoal really the way you want it with just the right amount of ash. So I've got uh, five, I've got uh, 11 charcoal briquettes in there and I'm gonna stop there. Then I'll just put the Dutch oven back on top of these pieces of charcoal. If I can set it down and not set it on top of one, there we go. And I'm gonna let that heat up for probably about 15 minutes before I put the ingredients in there so it'll be nice and warm. So after that warms up, we'll be back, start putting ingredients in there. I'm gonna say this again, and I know I'm gonna say it a hundred times before it's over. Remember to leave charcoal briquettes in the chimney. You don't wanna to have to start all over again. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna start with the meat and the veggies going in first. And I'm gonna let this heat up, get a little bit of, aha, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's sizzling. Doug, can it's you adjust? It's sizzling. To it sizzling, so I let that I let the Dutch oven warm up first, so that I didn't put it into um, a, a cold Dutch oven. I'm gonna let this brown up. It's already pre-browned, so I don't have to worry about that. I've already browned the meat, but I'm gonna let those vegetables sweat down a little bit. Let that meat heat up. Kind of let the vegetables soak up some of the the meat flavoring. Then I'll put the beans, the tomato stuff, and then my cheating chili pack that I'm putting in there. I am. Now that I've got that meat in there, I'm going to put probably four or five briquettes on the top of the Dutch oven just to give it a little bit of heat from the top. I don't, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not an expert at this, and I don't absolutely know that if it's necessary when doing this chili stuff to actually put charcoal on top. I know when you're baking that you really want to put charcoal on the top of it because it browns uh, either a cake or a pie. It makes the crust really nice and brown last week or week before last when we were up at uh, Florence Marina and I was supposed to show you making the peach cobbler putting those briquettes on the top really browned up that crust nice uh, and I promise that I will do a video of the peach cobbler but right now we're gonna let this heat up for a while probably I don't know maybe 10-15 minutes let that vegetable sweat in with the meat and then I'll show putting all the other ingredients in to the chili mix and then we'll really let it just simmer and let all the flavors mix together so 10 or 15 minutes we'll get back with you guys Okay guys, I'm going to uh, take the lid off. Oh, you can see it's steaming nice and hot. I'm just stirring up stuff here. I'm getting pretty close. The onions are getting clear, so I know they're starting to, uh, to get uh, cleared up and heated up and sweated down nice and almost ready for the other ingredients. Uh, while we were away, I did put a few more briquettes in here just to get those ready because I I'm gonna do this for probably two hours. You can tell Doug hasn't moved at all. It's almost like I've only been doing this for two minutes because he is I'm so hungry. He's so cold he hasn't moved at all. I'm um, starving. Starving, yeah. So uh, probably another five, six minutes and I'll be able to start putting the other ingredients in. Like I said, I did put some more charcoal in there to get it ready because I know that over two hours I'm going to have to put a few more briquettes on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to wait for my timer to go off and then I will get back to putting the rest of the ingredients in. Okay guys, this is the final step here. So I'm gonna, of course, take the lid off and you can see it's still steaming away. And everything has sweated down nice. The onions are nice and clear. The peppers are getting a little soft. The meat's all nice and warm. And I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the easiest chili recipe and it is also the, this is probably not a word and Doug's gonna correct me, the cheatingest chili recipe there is because really it's two and a half cans of tomato sauce one can of dark red kidney beans and one can of diced tomatoes so I, I really slaved over the stove today creating this wonderful mixture of ingredients to go into here the hardest thing was really browning the meat earlier in the week before I went camping 
when I'm camping, and I think Doug will probably agree with me, when I'm camping, I really don't want to spend a lot of time prepping stuff, so I'm cheating. I'm, I'm just using canned stuff. And, you know, you guys leave, leave notes in the post if you think that that's cheating, but I, I don't think it is. It's, it's, it's called being smart, camping smart, right, Doug? Camping Camp smart. smart. So again, I'm just pouring this stuff in here. It's gonna heat up probably, I, I, I think I'm gonna let it go for probably an hour. That's that's probably enough time because there's, there's really nothing here that needs to be cooked. And I'm getting hungry. And Doug's getting hungry. He already went and got potato chips because and I got coffee too. he's tired of waiting on me. So there goes my can of beans. I did drain the juice out of the beans, so there was no juice in those beans, just, just regular beans. And again, diced tomatoes. There's gonna be a lot of chili here. If a lot you're of hungry. chili. For if two of us? If you're hungry, there's a lot of chili here. I hope so. Finley's hungry. Yeah, I hope Finley's hungry. And then, uh, I'm lightweight. This is this is mild. It's not not even medium. And yes, he is mild. And it is. And it, he is, is lightweight. <laughs> yeah, I am a lightweight. Jeez. So this is, this is just any generic you know, chili mix. Again, I'm not I'm not a master chef and mixing up my own ingredients. I just went and picked up a mild package. Not hot, not medium, mild. And now it's just a matter of stirring all this together. And then I am, because this has been going for what? 40 minutes? Probably 30 to 40 minutes, something like that. This, is, this has been over these coals for 30 or 40 minutes. I am gonna put probably four or five mix, more briquettes underneath the Dutch oven. See, I've mixed everything together. It's just nice and evenly mixed. No dry powder mix uh, left. And I'm gonna put the lid back over the top of this. And I will pick this whole Dutch oven up. That's what's nice. If you, you can probably wear a pair of gloves and you know pick this handle up. But this little thing that came with the Lodge Dutch oven was, very handy and it makes it easy. You can pick the lid up, you can pick the pot up, you can just do about everything you need with this one little device. And I've already pinched myself once with these little tongs so I'm being very careful. Uh, again, like I said, I'm going to put four or five more briquettes underneath here. These other ones are starting to, you can see how small they've gotten. They're, they're burned down quite a bit. So I'm going to put four or five more underneath here and I will probably start some more charcoal so that I have more for a little bit later, just in case I need it. I don't want to run out of briquettes. Oh, not the lid, don't pick the lid up. I want to pick the whole Dutch oven up and put it on top of this charcoal. And I will probably put a few more briquettes on top just to get it all nice and toasty on the inside. Whoops. And if you do get a Dutch oven, make sure you get one that's got a lid around the outside. I've known some people that made the mistake of getting one without the rim around the outside, and it's not life or death, but it makes it much more convenient when you take the lid off, the ashes don't fall on the food. So make sure you get the lid with the rim around the outside. When you're putting charcoal on top, it makes it a lot easier to keep the ashes out of the food. So that's it. We're going to let this sit probably for 30 minutes now. Maybe stir occasionally, but we'll let it sit for 30 minutes. We'll come back and see how it's going. And then we'll have some chips, right, Doug? Well, chips. Because Doug, Doug's hungry. Hung, very hungry. No, i got to get him to eat him so I don't take him home. Fin, Finley doesn't care. He's turned the other way. He's completely ignoring us. I think he's upset because he hasn't eaten yet. So we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys. We are 30 minutes in to heating up our chili and it is really starting to look good here. Uh, the chef de cuisine here is uh, giving his honest opinion and I think it, uh, it's gonna be a hit. Of course, we're camping, it's cold, and anybody that camps knows that food cooked outside while you're camping is always the best food. So this could be the worst chili in the world, but it's gonna taste good, right but Doug? It's, it's chili on a chilly it's night. It's chili on a chilly night. I am probably going to add a few more, not a lot more, I'm probably going to put maybe two or three more briquettes under the bottom and maybe two or three more on the top and then I will call that done for uh, the charcoal and the Dutch oven and the chili for tonight because I only have 30 more minutes and I think it is going to be perfect. You can see it steaming so it's pretty hot but I just want to make sure it stays warm for the next 30 minutes and I think we'll be good. I, I have enough charcoal in there that I am not going to make any more. I think I'm going to finish up what I've got in there and be done. So 30 more minutes and then we'll give it a taste test and we're going to give it a 
thumbs up. This is a premature thumbs up, but I think we're going to give it a thumbs up. And you will note we have not gotten into the shot the chips yet. We're but I have had my second cup of coffee. Yeah. So in other words, Doug is going to be running to the restroom anytime. Really quickly. Now. Really quickly. So 30 more minutes, and then we will see what the chili tastes like. Get this chili chili going. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Doug is freezing over there. I am a Florida boy. <laughs> through and through. It's a good thing we got chili today. And so it's the, cold. <laughs> the chili is done. It is 100% uh, done. Uh, it is steaming. We have bowls. We have sour cream. We have cheese. And we are ready to eat. So, Mr. Doug, do you want to uh, do the honors? Ah! And be have the first bowl. I got a bowl over here if you want it. Oh no, I got. I, hey, I come prepared. I you bring my prepared? own bowl. There you oh. go. That's, that's all you get. Ah, uh, more, more, more. You're supposed to say the rest of them. What? I don't even know what the rest of it is. That was a joke, and I didn't know the rest of it. It's from the Christmas story. Come on. More, more, more. And you want more? That's enough, thank you. That's enough. You want some uh, cheese and some sour cream? Some cheese, no sour cream. Cheese, no sour cream? I'm driving tonight. You want a sprinkle? Oh, please. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. That's thank it. You. Okay, so. That's the first now, bowl. if I keel over dead, you'll know that it was not very good. I hope he doesn't burn burn his mouth. That's what I'm, that's what I'm counting oh. on, is he doesn't burn his mouth. Because I think it's pretty warm. Is it pretty warm? Oh, it's perfect. Is Considering it? how cold I am. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Finn, look at Finley. Finley. Oh, that works. Poor Finley is trying to figure out, where's mine? Where's We're fine. Mine? I'm freezing too. This is excellent. Is it pretty good? That works. I'm going to cover this back up so that it doesn't get cold because it's freezing out. So, or leaves falling here's in. what it looks like. You can see I'm out of the frame, but oh, scrumptious. Look at that. It's probably out of focus. But it turned out pretty good, I think. So we'll uh, we'll give it a taste test. Doug's already tasted it. it. Says it's pretty good. So we are going to enjoy our chili meal tonight, and we'll let you know tomorrow how it turned out. Okay. So I know I already turned the video off and said we were done, but here's another shot of the video. But Dig Doug brings up a really good point. Could have done this in the trailer, no doubt about it. Could have put it in a pan and been done with it. But the best part is Doug is groups getting together. Exactly. We sat out here, we enjoyed the great outdoors, we took a couple of hours with the Dutch oven, made our chili, we get to sit out here and enjoy it. Sitting inside is not why you go camping. You go camping to be outside and enjoy it. It is a little chilly, but we're having chili to combat the chili. You go out camping to associate with your friends around the fire. That's exactly right. Not to be like you're at home cooking around a stove. This. The Dutch oven makes that possible. You sit outside, you enjoy it, you uh, share good food with good friends. Lots of cups of coffee when it's cold. Lots of cups of coffee. So now we'll close the video out of making chili with the Dutch oven and the friendships that it builds. So that is the number one reason for doing chili in the Dutch oven outside while you're camping. And I will zoom in on my chili with the cheese and the sour cream. Hey guys, uh, it's early Sunday morning. Finley and I are here, and I'm shooting this on the phone just to see how it goes. I don't know, rather than the big, the, bring the big camera, I was going to try to shoot this on the phone this morning. We're gonna hike a portion of the Florida Trail, which runs right in front of Juniper Springs. Uh, probably not gonna be able to hike a lot of it, maybe a half an hour out, 45 minutes, something like that. We gotta check out this morning. This morning is a little cool, but not as cold as it was yesterday morning, so it should warm up nicely while we're on the trail. Finley is, of course, smelling something, as usual. So we are not too far from the trail. The trail's just up the road here. We will hike on the trail, shoot some video on the trail, show you what it looks like. I don't expect it to be super exciting because after all, oh, look at that, Finley fan, I found a can. Finley, no cans, come on, put that down. Okay, let's go, there we go. Oh, now he's gonna wanna play, oh, I'm sorry for spinning around so fast. He's gonna wanna play with that can. Let's go, come on. Now he's going to want to play with his leash. That's what we got going on now. 
playing with his leash. So we are going to uh, go on the Florida Trail. Like I was saying, I don't expect it to be super exciting. It's a Florida Trail. There's no mountains. It's just a lot of scrub brush, but we will hike it. Maybe there is something exciting to look at, some old frontier piece or something. Until we get on the trail, we'll see you then. Bye. And it really, I don't know if it's the lighting or the sun the way it is, but it's actually, even though there's not a lot of variety on the trail, it's actually pretty nice out here this morning. The sunlight is nice. It's nice. The temperature is perfect. Couldn't ask for anything better to be on the trail. And um, the sunlight coming, filtering through the trees, it's just gorgeous. It's really not a lot of variety in scenery, but when the light goes through the trees, it really does make for a nice scene. Finley's having a great time running up and down the trail. There's nobody out here, so I'm probably breaking a little bit of the park rules by letting him run and not have actually hold his leash. But you've seen in the video, he's pretty good. He gets about, I don't know, maybe 25 foot ahead of me. Then he stops, looks, sees where I'm at, wait for me to catch up, and then he goes again. So he's actually pretty good. That, that part of the training of him staying close to us really works, has worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna continue to walk on the trail here and enjoy this beautiful morning. I will say this at the closing of the video, but remember, you guys, if you get a chance, get out, enjoy this beautiful country we have, because these experiences, they cost almost nothing. You can go out and enjoy these trails, buy a state park pass, and you can enjoy this all year long for pennies a day. So get out there, enjoy this stuff. You cannot believe how enjoyable this is. So remember, I'm gonna say it, keep chasing your dreams. Bye. Hey guys, well, this is the time we'd all dread. Even, even Finley is dreading it. He's so comfortable on his little bed. You know, it's Sunday, time to leave. Checkout is fast approaching. We did get to stay till one o'clock because checkout wasn't until one, so that was nice. We're, we're maximizing our stay here today. We had lunch. Jan would be proud that Uno is all cleaned out, swept out, everything's put away. She's not gonna have to pick up after the boys. She'll be happy with that. We did have a great time here at Juniper Springs. Um, this is our second time being here. Again, it, it uh, park is beautiful. I know it, it, you probably can't see it from here, but the sights are so spread out. It makes it really nice. A lot of tree cover. It was a little cold, but today is, I'm going to tilt it up and hopefully the exposure will change. You can see it's nice and spotty clouds and a blue sky. It's a gorgeous day. Um, temperature, I don't have my big jacket on anymore and I don't have my beanie on so you know that it's not bad at all. We uh, got to go on the Florida Trail early this morning. You saw some video of that had Blast Finley had a great time running up and down the trail. Had a good time. I was don't tell Jan this, but we missed her. It was uh, it, it was lonely without her, but we the boys did have a good time. I know uh, Jan was probably having a really good time with her girlfriends and didn't even think about us, but we missed her. Isn't that right, Finley? Didn't we miss Mommy? Yeah, he said yes, we missed Mommy. So next time Mommy will be with us, Jan will be uh, excited to go camping, I'm certain. We wanted to close the video out here. Remember, give us two thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you aren't, aren't already subscribed. I'm stumbling over my words. See, Jan should be here to say this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed so you can stay up to date with all of our adventures. And remember, keep chasing your dreams. They are out there and they are easy to attain. You don't have to have a whole heck of a lot of material or equipment to do it. You can have a tent. We had some friends right next door uh, that we met this weekend that were tent camping, had a blast, and enjoyed the park just as much as we did. So until next time, which will be Crawfordville and Jan will be with us, another Airstream rally. We will have a blast there, I'm certain. We will see you then. Until then, keep chasing your dreams. Bye.